continuing on with The People Before by Maurice Chadbolt. We finished the last video looking at the father. We talked about him being a good Kiwi bloke. Um, he, the, the son is a reflection of him. He's a traditional man. And finally, the arrival of the Maori characters on his farm shows the father's racism and his lack of understanding for those who are different. He assumes that the Maoris will get drunk and cause trouble. The father is the main influence in the narrator's life. The narrator gains some of his perspectives on life from his father. He takes after his father more than his mother. And this quote shows that I remained my father's. Physical description of the father. He wasn't a big man, but he was wiry and thin, with a lean face and cool blue eyes. He was one of those people who can't keep still. Also, the quote, now most of the fighting was done, he sometimes found it quite an effort to keep busy coupled with the idea that he always found some reason for his not to get away, hints at the father's inability to forget his war experiences. The maintenance of his farm thus prevents his mind, you can't see this bit, from dwelling on the war. So it's almost like the farm and how hard he works on the farm is a way of preventing him from remembering too much about the First World War that he fought in. The father detested softies, even the accomplices of softies, because of his upbringing, and growing up milking 200 cows at eight years old and thin as a rake. So he had a hard upbringing, and he hates those people who don't work hard as well. Although the father didn't complete his education, he could out-argue most people, probably out-fight them too. So although he didn't finish his education, he's still quite a bright, smart man. He's also independent and strong-willed. We can see that in this quote. I'd bend my head to no man. And you know what the secret to that is, boy? Land. Land of your own. For the father, owning land is the most important thing in his life. It means that he can be independent. He doesn't have to rely on anybody else. His land is important to him because the knowledge that he'd built where somebody else had failed. Part was that he'd given too much of himself there to be really free anywhere else. It wouldn't be the same walking onto another successful farm, a going concern, everything in order. That was why he felt so secure on his own land. The father <coughs> is suspicious when the Maoris arrive on his land. His opinion of Maoris, they were lazy, drank too much and caused trouble. They just rode on the backs of men on the land like the loafers in the cities. The father's racism really comes through in this quote and how he doesn't, sorry, how he um, sees different people in a negative light. An important perspective of the father's. So far as he was concerned, history only began the day he first set foot on the land. It was his, by sweat and legal title. That was all that mattered. That was all that could matter. So as far as he was concerned, there was no history. History only started when he arrived on his land. He didn't even consider the idea that the Maoris or anybody else could have been on his land before. And this links in with the title, The People Before. He didn't even 
didn't even think of the idea that, that anybody could have been on his land before. Compare this to the way the Maoris think of the land. The Maoris think of the land as close to their hearts and their spirits. They believe that all of their history belongs on the land. Completely the opposite of the father's idea. Jim is the younger son of the father and he's described as small, a mother's boy, softy, quiet and slow. Look at the connotations associated with these descriptions. They suggest to the reader that, the, that Jim is the antithesis, the exact opposite of his father and of the narrator. So Jim is the younger son of the family. His life and interests are not bound by the farm. Rather, he is a, a boy who enjoys spending time inside, reading, studying, being with his mother. He connects, on the other hand, he connects with the land in a way that the father and the narrator don't. He's more like the Maoris in this sense. And he's curious about the people before the Maoris. He collects relics and tries to find out about their rightful owners. He has no interest in finding out about the greenstone adzes, nor does he try to sell them. Jim is a sensitive boy and far more spiritual than his brother or his father. He offers to return to the Maoris the greenstone adzes that he finds in his explorations around the farm. In areas that his father sees as useless because he cannot farm them. So Jim enjoys going up into the hills and exploring. Jim accompanies the Maoris <clears throat> when they go up the hill to let the old man connect once again with the land of his birth before he dies. This is something that the father wouldn't even contemplate doing. He wouldn't even begin to imagine the idea of going along with the Maoris, nor with the narrator. But this shows Jim's sensitivity and his spiritualness. When the Second World War has finished, for Jim, the farm has really begun become Te Wahio Kohoki, the place of happy returns in the language of the Maoris. Although the elder brother, the narrator, spent more time actually working the land, it is Jim who had bonded with it. This is a really difficult idea for the narrator, that Jim is closer to the land than he is. As he grew older, Jim turned more into himself and became still quieter. You could never guess exactly what he was thinking. It wasn't that he didn't enjoy life. He just had his own way of enjoying it. Have a think about what this tells you about Jim as a character. He gathered leaves and tried to identify the plants from which the leaves came. He collected stones those of some interest in shape or texture. He had a big collection of stones. So he does enjoy nature and he does enjoy the land, but he does it in a different way than the narrator and the father. The father can no longer make Jim conform to his values. Jim was entirely surrendered at last to the house and books, to school and my mother. So Jim had Sorry, the father had given up on making Jim try to work on the land. Instead, Jim just spent his life in the house with his books and at school and with his mother. And also we meet Tom in this story, who is the younger Maori who brings the older Maori to the land to die. And Tom is a modern Maori. He has a connection to and an understanding of the culture of his people. 
but he straddles both worlds. The European world of the white New Zealander and modern New Zealand and the Maoris. While the land they returned to may have traditionally been a place of spiritual significance to his people, the old man that he accompanies is the last one of his people to have been born there, suggesting that Tom and his Wano, his tribe, have lost their connection to their tribal home. This old man is the last connection with this land. He was the last person to be born there. Unlike the father, the Maoris are connected spiritually to the land. While Tom has never been here before, he recognises the hill the Maoris inhabited or lived on because they described it so well I could find the place blindfold. All the stories of our tribe are connected with that hill. Compare how the father thinks of the hills. He thinks of them as a nuisance because he can't farm them. He focuses instead on the flat lands where he can grow crops and he just finds the, the hills an annoyance and pointless. Whereas for the Maoris, all of their stories, all of their history, all of their the stories that they tell each other are connected with that one hill. Although Shadbolt characterizes Tom Tai Kaka as a pleasant, courteous and patient character, there is also the constant underlying acknowledgement of the Europeans displacing of the Maori from their land. That is a running theme throughout the story, the fact that the Europeans, the white New Zealanders, have stolen this land from the Maoris. Some language techniques that we can see in this short story, The People Before. This will be continued into the next video as well. The language is easy and conversational. Maybe this is because of the narrator who is a, well, when he's looking back on his story when he was a young boy. The use of first person narrative gives the story intimateness and directness, which we wouldn't necessarily have if this was third person. But because it's told from the eye point of view, we feel intimate with the protagonist, the narrator. But you should question if we feel sympathy, empathy, connectedness with the narrator, or if we feel sympathy with the Maoris. The title, The People Before. The people before, not, though not in the story as characters, influence much of the story and the attitude of the characters. The father has no time to think of who the people before are, except when Jim displays the greenstone adzes. Even then, however, the far, father does not relate to the people before. His thought is only about how much the stones could be worth. He doesn't even question or contemplate who the people before were because as we've seen, for him, history only begins when he arrives on the farm. This last part will be continued in the next video.